Let's go. Yes. What's up guys? Welcome back to J Hook Adventures. It's been a long time. I need a haircut. Many things are happening. But what's happening in today's video? We are going to be doing my first ever like legit lure review. Today I have two packs of the new EPF swim from Euro Tackle. Now this was designed in collaboration with Extreme Philly Fishing, Big YouTuber, and Euro Tackle. So they came up with this little one inch micro finesse kind of uh, min minnow imitation, kind of paddle tail looking thing. It uh, looks fishy. Now, I have to admit, I have fished this at my local creek already with some success, so I know it works. The question is, can it work where I'm at today? Brand new spot, a spot that I don't know where the holes are, so completely blind. I'm gonna be fishing in a kayak, which I've never done before, down the little Miami River here in my local area. And, uh, we're going to basically find out, am I doo-doo, are the lures doo-doo, which I know they aren't, or is this spot completely crap? So, with that, let's get right on into it. Alright, well, while I try to figure out how exactly I'm going to do this, let's go ahead and start off with some pros and cons. So, pros, I already know it catches fish. I've caught green sunfish and smallmouth at my local creek. Cons, jig heads are a problem. It is best recommended between a uh, 1 32nd and 3 32nd jig head size with a size 6 hook. Finding that size hook on that size jig head is not exactly easy. And then once you do find them, they're going to split the bait. They're going to go right up the middle. I'll probably show you pictures here in a minute of what I mean by that. But the lead part is going to be too thick and it's going to split the bait. So, how do you get around that? Well. Euro Tackle makes these tungsten jig heads that are specifically made for this bait, basically. The bait is made by Euro Tackle, they're going to make it fit their, their jig heads pretty much. Now, normally not a big deal, but these jig heads are expensive. They are about two bucks a piece, six dollars plus shipping, gets you three of them in the colors that you want. So that right there is a con right out of the gate. I have made it to the first spot I want to try to fish. This is big old log jam, and we're gonna see what the EPF swim can do. Well, somehow, there is no fish at this log jam. I am honestly pretty surprised, quite shocked, but uh, been here about 20 minutes now and not a single hit. So we're gonna move on. There are carp. These trees are dropping some sort of fruit and the carp are coming up and eating it. That's weird. Wonder what that is. I've never caught like a legit carp before. I've only, only caught koi and stuff. One of the most common species of fish there are. I haven't gotten one. That's a bluegill chasing it right now. I got one boys let's go oh he just popped off no oh it's so hard to set the hook in this thing oh I think that was a little smally no first hit of the well first legit hit of the day I should say oh my man's went airborne and spit the hook I should be using a smaller rod dude Oh, all right, well, let's keep casting here. This seems like it might be the spot. All right, so it definitely appears I chose the wrong rod to bring. I should have brought one of my smaller rods from fishing in the kayak in. But we live and we learn. However, I feel like I should be able to stand on these islands and cast out and be fine. But we'll find out, I guess. There we go, boys. First fish of the day that gets landed. And it's a little river smallie. That's what I'm talking about. Not a monster by any stretch of the imagination. But uh, first fish of the day. Beautiful little smallmouth. Let's go ahead and get him back. All right. 
going to let him go. Give him a second to get his breath. He's physically clamped onto my thumb right now. Get. And he's off. Awesome. Well, might as well keep staying at this spot here. I've got the kayak banked right up there and keep casting it in. Oh, dude. Oh, that was a nice small mouth. There's another one in there. That was a nice one. Fish number two of the day is a little green sunfish. Wow, he really choked that too. He wanted it. Uh, pretty small, kind of tiny, but I mean, that is what the lure is designed for at the end of the day. It's panfish and smut and such. Still so bummed about losing that big, that big small mouth, man. That was at least a pound and a half small mouth, I'd say, but... For what it is right now, there's a green sunfish. All right, made a quick change up. We went from white to chartreuse, uh, cause I, it's time for me to go. But before I get into that too much, we're gonna try this back on that small mouth and see if maybe the change of color will make him uh, reconsider eating it again. All right guys, unfortunately I could not entice the small mouth to come back out. It's now time for me to pedal upstream, which is going to be so much fun, and that's probably going to end this section of the video, because I'm not leaving it there. The lure performed pretty well today. We lost three fish, caught two, and uh, one was a really nice smallmouth, and that cannot be put on the lure. That All three of those fish that we lost are squarely on me, and my um, bringing of the wrong rod has definitely not helped, and uh, just not setting the hook well. So... Part two is inbound. Stay tuned. Let's go. Yes. In the kayak, another, oh, snoo, snap, he in the boat with me. Oh, crap, it went up my pants leg. Oh, snap, hello, fish. Oh, no. Oh, there he is. Oh, fish, chill. chill. He went under the seat of the kayak. Okay, there we go. Oh, uh, no. Stop, dude. What the crap? Chill, fish. Chill. All right, there we go. Smally numero dos on the EPF swim. This is the chartreuse one. I decided to cast up by the log jam again now that the day is a little bit cooler and the First cast up by the log jam, boom. Another little creek smolly. We're just gonna go ahead and get him right back in the water. Bam, he's off. I don't know how well you guys can see that. There is just a ton of carp eating whatever's falling off of those trees. Look at this one, he's coming right up to me, dude. I should have brought my carp fishing stuff. Yeah! What is this? This is a white bass, yo. I've never caught one of these outside of Lake Erie. Sorry I didn't get the best footage. He hit so quick, like right at the kayak. I didn't even know these were in here. EPF swim tearing it up. Uh, maybe I should have just stayed at the log jam all day and just come later in the day. That is species number three. After I already called part two, that is uh, species number three, fish number four? Yeah, that sounds like math. But uh, very nice. We'll go ahead and get him back in the water as well. Bye bye, buddy. Not what I was expecting today. That would have probably been one of the bottom fish that I would have thought I was going to catch today. Welcome back for part two of the EPF swim review. As you saw yesterday at the river, we ended up with two smallies and a white bass and a green sunfish, three species. Pretty good time all in all. I'm now here at this little neighborhood pond because one, I've never caught a bass out of here before, but I know they're in here because I've seen them. And two, 
uh, it's really close to where I happen to be right now. So with that, we're going to go ahead and get straight into it. We're going to start with the green. We're going to do a lap of the pond and see if we get anything. Then switch over to the white and do a lap of the pond with the white and see what happens. Let's get started. Look at that blue, yo. Oh my gosh. That is a chunky blue. The dude doesn't even have a mouth. I know I didn't do that. Well, I still have not caught a bass yet, but a bluegill literally the size of my hand, that is not what I expected at all. Jeez, this is a monster. My man has no mouth. Upper jaw is completely gone. I did not do that. As you can see, it's pretty healed. It's not bleeding or anything, but that's pretty wild. Let's go ahead and get him back bass swimming around down there so I've been casting kind of at them I could see several several obviously and thought for sure that's what I had but nope but as you can see another uh, species for the EPF swim a bluegill a big bluegill we got another oh we just caught came off that was another big bluegill though like man look there he goes Wow. I did not know there was bluegill that size in here. Jeez. EPF swim holding up strong. Oh my gosh, he swiped it. Right. He swiped it right as I brought it in. Right as it was, I mean, as it was coming out of the water, he swiped at it, but he got it. First bass out of this pond. In the mouth, 100%. Barely hooked though, look at that. Barely hooked. That's all it takes though. Another species for the EPF swim, just a little largey. One of those ones that I've been seeing circling though and just knew all it was gonna take is him to hook for him to hit it and we'd have him. There we go. First largey on the EPF swim goes back. So as I keep throwing it here. Or I keep landing fish. Let's go ahead and go over some pros and cons of the EPF swim. So, pros, it works. It works very well. Cons, finding jig heads for it, a little bit of a pain in the butt. Second bass. Finding jig heads for it, a little bit of a pain in the butt. The only other downside is not even so much of a knock on the lure itself as much as it is on these uh, little jig heads, which I didn't realize till I got back from the river yesterday. Let me go ahead and just get this little squeak back in the water. As I was saying, the only other con I can really think of is the barbs on this jig head are extremely small and I have a feeling that that did not help yesterday with why I was losing fish I, I'm not gonna say it was hundred percent on the barbs because it obviously wasn't but it definitely didn't help anything there we go bass number three on the EPF swim all very cookie cutter size which is a little bit annoying but I'm guessing that is definitely more down to the size of bass that are actually in this pond. Seeing as about two years ago, um, when I very first came to this pond, there wasn't bass in it. There weren't bass in it at all. But now there's some Mondo bluegills and uh, the bass will probably catch up soon. So not bad at all. Now I really wanted to do part two of this review at the river again. But it is raining every single day this week and if any of you guys have ever fished small rivers or creeks before you'll know that you usually have to wait a good two three days after a heavy rain for one the water calms down enough where it's safe to fish again and uh, also for the water to clear up a little bit as well and unfortunately that's not going to be possible when it rained last night after I got back. It rained this morning. It's gonna rain tonight. And every day has at least a 70% chance of rain for the next week. So, 
I figured I'm over here anyway in this neck of the woods. Let's see if I can catch some bass out of this pond. Because I have seen them in here, but up until today had never caught one. And the, the EPF swim was definitely the right choice. Squeak McGee is our fourth bass. Bit it right as I brought it out of the water. Just like the, I think it was the first one that did that. But this guy is uh, extra squeaky. Okay, Squeak McGee, be gone. He out of here. These fish are biting right at the shore. Now, here we go. This is not a bluegill. See that right there? I believe this is a red-eared sunfish. He's a nice one too. I'm wondering if that other one was a radiant sunfish as well and I just didn't, uh, oh, he's peeing. I just didn't see, ow, I didn't see the colors. All right, he is ready to go. He's peeing on me. I'm just gonna go ahead and get him back in. Yeah, there he goes. Bye-bye, buddy. They are biting right as I pull it out of the water. So that's why I'm not getting the best footage, but I'm not even gonna have enough time to do the lap around the pond with the white EPF swim today because oh that was a bluegill for sure because I'm running out of GoPro battery so what I might do is I might just charge them up tonight and come back out during a break in the rain this week kind of like I'm doing right now another one almost back we've made it about 75 percent on our lap of the pond with the chartreuse one Ooh, barely hooked on that one and just another 10 inch ish cookie cutter largemouth I'm starting to think that these were probably stocked the last spring i would imagine and uh this is a year about a year's worth of growth all right eight percent battery left we're going to tie on the white one and uh, get as much of a lap done as I can before my batteries die. On 1%, so my GoPro didn't even turn on because I hadn't turned the notification off yet, sadly. But uh, the white one did catch one. I tried to go to the juiciest spots first, knowing I had low battery, but here we go. Uh, I will film the rest of the white one another day after I charge my batteries up. All right, it's a new day. The next day... And we're going to do one lap around the pond with the white EPS swim. All right, the EPS swim it, working well in white on like the third cast. Not bad at all. Wow, look at that. He swallowed that thing. I'm not sure how well you guys can actually see that. My big fat thumb in the way, but... Little Dinkosaurus Rex. I've determined that this is pretty much the only size in there. They do, there are a few slightly bigger, but for the most part, that is the size that you got to work with out of here. Fish number two with the white one, not even a quarter of the way through the lap. So even with the rain, Even with the rain, we reeling in the dinks. He gone. Now this gives me a chance to actually show you what's different about this jig head that kind of makes it nice. It's got this little rubber ball thing here that slides. So when a fish does this to your lure, all you gotta do, bloop, is back into place. Now I have to deal with uh, it tearing your bait every three seconds, the giant lead hook thing that normally holds it in place. There we go. Woo, fish number three. We're actually, oh, he spit it right there. We're actually a pretty good distance into it, about halfway around the pond now. And uh, this whole side, which was really good yesterday, this was the juice yesterday, 
is now covered in grass because they mowed the lawn here at some point today and just flung the grass clippings into the water, I guess. Super annoying, but um, yeah, well, just another little squeaky. All of the bass, all of the bass in this pond are complete squeaks. The biggest one I've caught has been about a foot long and maybe, maybe half a pound on a good day. Now, what would happen if I take these EPF swims to a pond where there's some bigger bass? Sounds like a pretty good video idea to me. Let me know down below if that's something you'd like to see because there's a new color on the way. Right now I've got white and chartreuse, but I've just ordered the bluegill pro and that should be arriving very soon. And the next shipment of them, as there's a bass looking at it right now, the next shipment of them is going to have purple and um, green pumpkin, I believe, are the two colors. So I might pick up a few of those as well. And we'll take these to another spot and see how they do. Oh. There he, he counts. He counts, sort of. First, uh, what the heck? That's a green sunfish. What kind of, okay, so I know there's bluegill in here because I've caught them before. Yesterday we caught either hybrids of some sort or red-eared sunfish, and that is a straight up green sunfish. So the uh, sunfish in this pond is a little weird. I'm betting people are just catching fish from the river and uh, tossing them in the pond. That would be my guess. That would actually explain why there's a massive carp in here. There's a carp in here that's no joke, probably 30 pounds plus. But uh, not what I was expecting, for sure. We are almost done. I've got maybe 10 more feet before I've completed a lap and the bite has really turned off to the point where um, I haven't actually even seen a bass for the past uh, third of the lap I'd say but this will probably be the last fish of the video then but uh let's go ahead and keep trying for the little bit I've got left I just watched him put that in his mouth I'm at the start point again so lap is pretty much over but I watched him put that in his mouth turn the camera on and set the hook hopefully all of that made it on footage chill my dude Once again, just another little cookie cutter bass, and uh, I think that is going to be it, folks. Let's go ahead and roll the outro while we determine whether the EPF swim is worth picking up and adding to your tackle box. Okay, so what are my final thoughts on the EPF swim? You get nine of them in a pack. I think they were four bucks a pack, maybe. I'll have that on my Instagram. You'll know it there. But uh, if you want to catch fish, they're awesome. They work great. I have almost no complaints whatsoever about them other than the jig head situation that I've explained several times now. Um, with the jig heads that they do come with, it'd be nice if you could get them with a slightly bigger barb, because I did lose quite a few fish that I don't feel were all 100% my fault, but durability, I'm going to give them a 9 out of 10. I used the same two, one chartreuse and one white, neither one of them broke, neither one of them split, neither one of them did nothing whack. Uh, the action on them, I'm also going to give that a 9.5 out of 10 because, uh, yeah, I mean, it just plain and simply works. So, are you going to catch big fish? I don't necessarily know. I didn't catch any big fish, but maybe there just weren't any big fish in the uh, locations that I was at. I know there's none in that pond down there. And the Little Miami, I did hook into a nice smallmouth, but I just didn't land it. So, we will obviously try these at a location where I know there's big fish. But uh, overall, I'm going to give these an A. If you can get your hands on a pack, definitely do so. But with that, guys, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, I will see you in the next one. Remember, life is fun, and go have an adventure.